Good morning, gaming intelligentsia. I'm the chief product officer at Evolution Gaming, and I spend all day thinking about what people will want to play tomorrow. 2080 is about the year most of us are going to die. And that is exciting. And if you think about the modern day, it's largely defined as us living our lives on screens. It is. Video games, binge watching, the way you order a taxi, the way you communicate, get your news, it all happens on screens. That's 2020. 2030 is going to be defined by self-driving cars mixed together with people driving the cars themselves, DNA sequencing, you'd be able to edit out any problems with your health, and the idea of, of a doctor reading an x-ray will be absurd when the machines can do it better. In 2040, we'll have a colony on the moon, which is pretty cool, uh, excuse me, on Mars, and you'll be able to take a trip around the moon if you want. Most people won't care to, though, just like they don't care to go to Antarctica. And in 2060, the concept of a doctor performing a surgery on you will be nothing but absurd. It'll probably even be outlawed. And the big debate of the day is going to be what? Whether your kids should have chips installed in their brains so that they can remain competitive with the AI. They won't be able to if they don't get the chip. <laughs> and in 2080, I have no idea what it's going to be. But I do know one thing. We're all still going to be using some kind of currency. I don't know what it's going to be, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero, dollars, euros, it'll be something. And we're going to want more of it. However much you have, you're going to want more, and you're going to be willing to risk some of it on an uncertain event, which is good for us in this room, because that means gambling isn't going anywhere. So, our future, though, is not guaranteed. Gambling is guaranteed, but it's not guaranteed that we get to win. Remember these guys and what happened to them? Of course, you know, this happened to them. And you remember we all used to use these devices? What happened? You know the answer. Apple happened, right? And you're thinking, Todd, we know these already. Those are, those are typical examples. But let's talk about some less obvious ones. How about the music industry? Isn't it amazing that Apple is not winning the digital music revolution? That should be shocking. They're the ones that taught us all to pay for digital music in the first place. And they're losing it to some Swedish company. <laughs> Yahoo, which we all used to use, is losing the battle, or <laughs> lost the battle long ago, to a couple of Stanford kids. Took their eye off the ball. Of course, you guys all know about this transition. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that the revolution onto the cloud wasn't won by IBM or Oracle or Microsoft, but by an online retailer? Can you imagine that? Such a huge prize. And who won the race or is winning? Amazon. Of course, Facebook disrupts MySpace, and then Facebook is in the process of being disrupted by their own company, Instagram. Good thing they bought them, good acquisition. And this one is amazing. You think Microsoft is a powerhouse company? You think they let go of things easily? You think they could see that the browser was something that you want to control for the future? You think they fought hard? I do. And they lost it. That's amazing. I mean, the same way we all think that, you know, we're sitting pretty here today and it's going to be hard for us to lose our position, Microsoft lost it. And we're part of that disruption too. We're disrupting the old guard. We are disrupting land-based, right? The winners of online gaming aren't Caesars, Win, MGM, it's us. So how did this happen? Really, 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 really simple. They just had better product. Nothing more. They got it out to the public, and they said, we like this one better than that one. They had better product than them. So what's my next question going to be? Who is going to disrupt us? Hopefully, we disrupt ourselves. 
And I think we can. We would certainly be the favorite for you odds makers in the room. But who might disrupt us? This is kind of a fun question. What if we went to the future, came back, and we said, hey, we all lost the race. Guess who beat us? That should terrify you. <laughs> Suppliers and operators alike. It's not happening, but、um, it should terrify you. Think they can't afford to lose a billion bucks a year just while they're warming up? Think they're going to buy a lot of our games? Or they're going to make their own. Everybody who ever bought a book about gambling or watched a show, or the data correlates to the thing that they watched on Amazon Music or, even or movies, or they even listen to a particular song, like know when to hold them, know when to fold them, is going to get something from them. They're going to tie it into Amazon Prime, and oh my God, is that scary. What if all the leagues got together and said, we're going to combine and we're going to have the official sports betting solution? Hmm. We're going to stop sharing information with third party services. The only way to advertise during any of our games is going to be our own online betting site. Scary stuff. And what if a video game company like Rockstar? Decided they wanted to get into the world of online gaming. Well, we have just a little taste of what that might look like. Here it is. Equally terrifying as Amazon getting into the space. 100 million users, people are investing every day in the avatars that they build up in that, in that world. It's the right age demographic. Hopefully, it's not kids playing it.、Um, and、uh, everything about it is terrifying. Now, you might look at it and say, oh, their games aren't that interesting or whatever. But what if while we were all focused on the games and they were focused on the ecosystem, And they said, our games don't have to be that good. It doesn't matter. You can bet on a coin flip. You're so into that world, they've got 100 million credit cards, and they decide one day, you know what? We're legal. We're going to flip it the other direction and go for real money. I'm not saying any of these things are going to happen, but it's healthy to think about what would happen if they did. And it's also interesting just to think about it for our own purposes, you know, as we think about innovation. So, How do we win? First of all, I think it's healthy to recognize that our competition, yeah, it's each other, but more so we're fighting for people's time on screens. Okay? We're fighting for basically a, what we offer is an indoor activity conducted on a screen. And so we're looking to we're compete with these guys. So we recognize that first. We've been very open about it at Evolution Gaming. You know, this is who we focus on, this is where we get our inspiration from. And,、um, We decided to launch this whole new genre of games called game shows. And、uh, they're not really slots, they're not really tables. It's just a new and kind of entertaining way to play. And so I wanted to share with you some of the findings that we've learned making these games. And we've had a, a lot of good fortune.、Uh, we got last year's EGR Game of the Year Award. We're very proud of that,、um, and, uh, and a number of others. So this is my open book. This is the play, but this is some of the things we've learned and how to make great games. And if we all make great games, then the industry wins together. So let's say we have our guy here, and he says, I've got a game idea. Okay, rock and roll. What are you going to do? He needs to have a game that's familiar but different. Okay? You can't get too crazy, but you've got to lead players into the next generation of games. Try not to copy. 
You're not going to inspire your team copying someone else. And if you're a buyer of games, it's a bad habit to、uh, reward. You want to reward innovation. That's what's going to lead our industry into tomorrow. Allow us to beat Amazon. Do you even want to play this game that you're making? We have to ask our friend. Do you want to play the game? Hopefully, the answer is yes. I can't wait to play it with my own money. That is the best. You have to be fanatical about the game. You have to care. Get rid of the budget. Get rid of the due date. Now that sounds crazy, but the game will be done when it's done. Don't put breaks on the project before you even start it, and try to fit it and confine to a budget. There's an amazing thing that happens when you spend more money on a game. The players can sort of tell; they 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 reward you with that. I'm pretty sure when they were inventing the iPhone, they didn't say this thing has to cost less than a billion to make and it has to be done by December 31st. It'll be done when it's done, and we're going to build the greatest phone in the world, and everybody's going to love it. Find the fanatics in your company or outside your company. Those who just love games, or love online gaming, or love whatever it is that you are doing. It's almost like a secret weapon. It allows them to see every fine detail, and it's super powerful. And get rid of the jerks. This is a hard one because we need to create this environment where everybody's speaking up, everybody's、uh, talking. And sometimes you have really talented people, but they're jerks, and you either need to turn them into not jerks, or they have to go because、um, the collaboration is just too important. And nobody's, no one person's bigger than the game. Once you have your idea, you have to explain to the team why are we doing what we're doing. We're, what problem are we solving? Why does anybody care about this new thing that we're making? And so, once your team understands that, then they will follow you. But you have to explain why. Have brainstorming sessions, not meetings. Meetings suck. Nobody likes them, right? Hey, let's together, get together and brainstorm about how we're going to do this next thing. Automatically, that sounds. Oh, I want to do that. Are you coming to the meeting? If I have to. All opinions are not equal. This is an interesting one.、Um, sometimes you're debating things in a room about a game or a, a, a di- direction decision, and you say, "Well, why don't we just vote?" No, no, let's not vote. Presumably, there's some expert in the room whose opinion is supposed to be more valuable than others. You have a UI problem or a design problem. Who's the smartest person in the room on that subject? It's great for us to all disagree and make our case and share logic, but if you have a disagreement, if we're trying to solve some math problem and Albert Einstein is in the room, it's not a group problem anymore. Just give it to Albert. Laugh and have fun. Make jokes in meetings. I'm constantly disrupting meetings. So I'll think, "Oh, you got to see this YouTube video." Maybe I waste four minutes per meeting with this. Four minutes out of an hour, and it keeps it light. It keeps it fun. And when people see, "Oh, yeah, you know, that person's scheduling a meeting." Oh, those meetings are always kind of fun. And and、um, and by having again that light-hearted environment, it's all to getting rid of the jerks, all that stuff. It's all to foster this culture of innovation. When people have to speak up. Okay, now you've got your product. It's show ready, and you've got to show it to people. And th- what's going to happen is you're going to show it to them and say, "Hey, we got this new thing. What do you think?" And they're going to say, "It's really nice." And then you're going to say, "Tell me three things you'd change." And then they're going to say, "Nothing. It's great." And then you have to say, and this is almost like a magic trick. I have 50 things I'm going to change with the game. This is a rough mock-up. I'm just wondering if the three things you're going to say are the same as some of the 50 that I have. So go ahead, give me three. Now you give them permission to criticize, and now stop talking. Don't defend your product. And they're going to say, "Well, you know, at first I didn't really understand how the thing worked." And don't say, "Well, if we did it, you did this." No, no, no. Let them go. Take notes and do that 50 times. It's so valuable. She has to know how to play your game. She doesn't have to be your target market, but she has to know how to play it. That's a good standard. I always say that in the meetings. Does Grandma know how to play this game? Push the boundaries, whatever that is. AR, VR,、uh, pushing the tech boundaries, whatever they are. Push on your team for richer math models or, or whatever it is. Dynamic websites, and reject lots of ideas. Why is this one important? Because the only way you can reject lots of ideas is if you have lots of ideas. And when you get everybody talking and you get all the ideas up in the air, then you can knock them down. Now, you, now it's a tricky thing that you have to do because you have to get all these ideas raised, 
Everybody has to talk. You have to constantly reject them, and then people still have to feel good about bringing the next idea. Which is why you have to make jokes in meetings and all that sort of stuff. Get rid of the jerks and reject lots of ideas. It's a good thing. Add them all together, and what do you get? Well, we just did this recently at Evolution, and、uh, we built the product that I'm the most proud of of anything I've ever worked on in my entire career. Here's how it looks. Another couple of happy customers. <laughs> These are the early days of online gaming. It never seems like that when you're busy living your life, but it is. We're gonna look back and say, remember when everybody was gambling on screens that you held in your hand? And you know, there's opportunities. What about voice? What about VR? What about AR? What about video games? All that sort of stuff. What about the television? We don't, basically don't do anything on that in our industry. I want to end with a final thought. About the competition, we get to work in the gaming industry. This is a fun business. It's cool. You gotta lie when you get on a plane about what you do because it's too interesting, because everybody wants to talk to you about it. And so, yeah, we're competing against each other and all that sort of stuff. But when when one company does something great, it brings in more players. And if we all make great stuff, then we all win together. It's a genuine thing. You wouldn't want one company that makes a couple of good games and everybody else doesn't. That wouldn't be a long-term success strategy. Even that company would make a lot less money. And so, <laughs> when a company like NetEnt does Starburst, we all win. We all win. This brings up the whole industry. When Rush Poker was created, it just brought in a whole new group of players and made people play longer. It allowed cross-sell opportunities. It was an incredible innovation. Big time gaming and mega ways, a new one. What an incredible thing! And it makes our industry better. Yeah, for a second it hurts. Ooh, they came up with a good innovation. But in the big picture, it's great for the industry. We want people to like their slot playing experiences. When Betfair created Cash Out, what a winner! Anytime people are having more fun playing games, it's a good thing for our industry. And God knows. These two companies practically built the industry in which we all work today. We all win when one of us does something nice. We all win together. So, who's going to win the future? I hope us in this room are going to win the future. We're certainly the favorites. We know how to do it. We're the ones that have all the knowledge. We're the ones that understand the players. We're the ones that have the players. It's our industry. It's our time. The future is ours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.